Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850-page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league-by-league -league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th. So you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 Division I teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, make sure you hit that link. I want to ask you guys about Syracuse. Have we talked about Syracuse yet? Oh, dude, no, but they are the most intriguing team yes. in the in the league. All right, so tell me why. Because there's, there's two reasons why I find them very, very, very interesting. Because who the hell knows? Like, who, who knows how they're going to play this year? New coach, Red, comes in, and it's like, well, is he going to play zone? Are they going to play man? He said they're going to play man. Are they going to play zone? Then they bring guys in like Naheem McLeod, who fits perfectly for his zone. A transfer, seven foot four transfer that heads up to uh, Syracuse. He fits right in the middle of the zone. And then you have all this length around the perimeter that could give you fits with the zone. And then JJ Starling comes in from Notre Dame, former McDonald's all America. Judah Mintz comes back the best returning guard in the league. And then Malik Brown. And I know this probably isn't going to be a popular opinion. He just this long rangy energy guy that just kind of molds everything together. And there's so much talent on the team. It's just like, how is this team going to be coached? Like we, mm -hmm. we just don't know. And there's been no precedent because, uh, he hasn't worked for anybody. He hasn't worked for anybody except for uh, Bayheim and Seth Greenberg. So, like, who are your, where are your, like, what defense are you going to do? And then if you do decide to play man to man, how are you going to play it? Like, so many questions, so many questions right there. But the talent is obvious. Benny Williams is obviously talented. I think a new coach coming in is obviously going to help him out. I, man, I, I am wildly intrigued, wildly I intrigued. I think they're going to be really, really good. I, like, I think we're talking like top 25. I think we're talking 25 wins. I think we're talking 13 or 14 wins in the ACC. Good Fanta. No, I'm not mad and, at that. The talent's there to do that. If JJ Starling can improve his perimeter shot making, that mm -hmm. would go a long way in their ability to make that leap. Now, Starling is great at attacking the basket and Judah Mintz, the return of Judah Mintz is the top reason why this team can dream. Because you're talking about a guy, do you know how hard it is as a freshman to come in and average 16 and five assists per game? Those are ridiculous numbers. Those he's are numbers. so fast. He is so fast. He's a beast. He's a beast. Chris Bell is another shot making weapon who I think is a bit of an X factor for them. Six foot seven can cause mismatches. I expect growth. At the end of the day, he came in as a freshman, played mm -hmm. 20 minutes per game. Benny Williams is a guy who I think, talking with Red for our Off the Carousel series, Red Altree's challenging Benny Williams to, to take ownership, to be the tough guy, to be physical, and to deliver. They've got height, plenty of height. Now it's a matter of who's going to step up and be that dude of the height that they have. Is it as simple as Naheem McLeod? But they've got options. This team has potentially multiple pros. And, and again, for me, if they can perimeter shot make, they're going to be better defensively. All right? That's not that hard to do. Because let's face it, Syracuse defensively the last couple of years has just been unathletic and not good. They're going to be better on that end of the floor. They're going to play more man. My concern has nothing to do with them. It has to do with the fact that they're playing in the Maui Invitational. It has to do with the fact that they're playing in the Maui Invitational. Is that the call you bailed on? Nope. <laughs> and that they're playing, um, they're playing a challenging non-conference schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. They're playing Oregon in Sioux Falls. They can win that game. Frankly, they, they probably should win that game. We'll see. But guys, if you're in the Maui, like if you look at the Maui Invitational right now, they're probably what sixth or seventh in that event. 
fifth, sixth, seventh. That event is loaded this year. Yeah, it's really good. It's um, I'm just laughing at To whatever the hell he, he keeps putting a pillow on his head for some reason for the people. Yeah, I know. I'm listening at home. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm like, yeah, sorry. The the <laughs> ADD has finally started kicking in. Yeah, I will say this. So I, I think there are two things that are going to determine how good this team are, and, and to say nothing of like. We're going to find out whether or not Red Archer can actually coach, right? Like maybe he is awesome. Maybe he's terrible. We don't, we don't really know. We have no idea. Yeah, we have no idea. Um, I think the two things that are really going to impact this are, one, the shooting from that backcourt, right? Like Judah mentioned, J.J. Starling combined to shoot about 30% from three. That's got to go up. You can't have your two best players, your two best guards, shoot 30% from three and win at the level you want to be able to win. Um, I'm not saying they got to be 45% three-point shooters. I'm saying let's get to mid-30s, fellas. Come on. Um, the other thing is Chance Westry. Uh, he was injured a lot last year. Um, but and he has loved like, him before they before he got hurt. Yeah, like I I talked with Bruce Pearl before last season, and he was like, Chance Westry's the guy. Like he's gonna be the guy in our backcourt. He's gonna be the guy no one's talking about. He's gonna be the best freshman we have. And he was injured and he was banged up and he didn't really get it done. But like a six six combo guard that can shoot it a little bit, that can play off the bounce a little bit, that can be switchable defensively. Like he, you plug him in with, with JJ and Judah and all of a sudden um, one, you have like maybe the coolest names for any, uh, for any backcourt in the country, but I can't imagine a better combination of length, athleticism and talent than Judah, JJ and chance Westry. That's, that's fun, man. That's a lot. Yeah. That's fun. Good. Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content.